Good morning. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Advent. I give thanks to God for gathering us here into worship to receive the, the words of hope and peace, joy, and love from our Lord Jesus Christ. Between services, we have the first of the two sessions on God, uh, money, and me, which is we'll do a little Play-Doh playing and a little improv and a little just thinking through our our values around money. So it's it's low, low stress, meant to be just thoughtful, um, nothing invasive. So please come and try it out if you're interested. Those of you who are online today, welcome to worship as well. On Wednesday, we continue with our midweek um, Advent services at 7 p.m. with Hold an Evening Prayer and then followed by our, our, our projects, our Advent Adventures. This week will be Church and Society for New Hope. So there's, we're going to be making some kits for those who are experiencing homelessness at this time. Um, we also will be... <laughs> um, Christmas Eve, that's the next thing I want to say. Christmas Eve will be um, two services this year in person, 5 o'clock and 11 o'clock. And I will post a service in the middle for those who um, wanted 7 o'clock, but we're not going to have one. <laughs> or you aren't able to come and you need to watch it at home or in some other way. So that will be a, one that's posted for you to watch anytime during the season. And we will have one service on the 26th, which is just um, so Friday and then Sunday, the one service at 9.30 for worship. Um, some news from our community. Donald and Paula Eisman ne uh, needed to move to California to be closer to their son to care a little bit better for Paula. And so um, it was pretty uh, abrupt and rapid and they weren't really able to say goodbye to this congregation or us to them. So we will be, ha um, if you want to bring in a card in the next two weeks, I'll have some cards out available in between services. I'll go get, get them from my office. Didn't have time to do it before. And you're, um, if you want to write a card to them from ones we provide, bring one in and then we'll get their new forwarding address and send them some creator love as well. Um, Vicki Kern's sister Diane also passed away on Friday um, after a, a five-year battle with cancer. So we keep um, Vicki and the rest of um, Diane's family in our prayers as well. I think those are our main announcements. If I'm missing anything, remind me or we'll send an email out. <laughs> Check your emails because there is a lot happening. And, um, and if you're struggling finding like links and stuff, it's, always on, it's usually on the website as well. Sometimes a hyperlink isn't highlighted in an email, but it actually will work if you click on it or things like that. That's just kind of the, the, this transition we're, we're making at this time. Okay, well, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship with our Advent wreath lighting. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The way of the Lord is to give salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. Now it's time to light the candles. Messengers, prepare the way. Wolf and lamb lie down together. Righteousness marks God's new day. We'll overcome the darkness, live the peace the Christ child brings.
We worship this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. Lord, for whom we wait in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. Please rise for the, for the forgiveness of your sins. God in Christ Jesus has looked with favor upon you. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of eternal, the eternal promise and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, I declare that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our gathering hymn is Prepare the Royal Highway. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your Holy Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. To come forward, right over here, 
you're following me. I love it. Let's. Okay, I'm a little. I'm a little um, frazzled. Do you know that word? Do you know what frazzled means? Like I, it feels like I have so much to do right now. I have presents to wrap. Does anybody else have presents to wrap at their house? Maybe. What else have you been doing at your house to prepare for Christmas? You set up your tree, yeah. Was that fun? You decorated, yeah. Not yet. Not your family yet. I'm sure there's some of us who are not yeters out there, right? So I am just, I feel like there's not enough time. I have to make sure the house is clean. I have to put away things. I have to put things up. I'm just, oh, and look, I think today we should maybe do that at church, okay? So, sit ready for Santa to come. How do you think we get ready for Jesus to come? Do we know how to get ready for Santa? We have to put the cookies out and maybe some milk. And do you ever put um, carrots out for the reindeer? We do that. At, we did that at my house too. But for Jesus, how do you think we need to prepare? Do you think we need to? Here, I'll give you all one of these. And you know what they are? They are. We've used these a lot this year, haven't we? So do you think this is how we need to prepare for Jesus? Wipe, wipe, wipe. Should we just go around and like, should we wipe things down here at church? Is that, do you think, how we need to prepare for Jesus? Is that how it's done? No. I mean, we do need to clean the church a little bit, right? Yeah, I can take those back from you guys. You don't need to. Or do you think we need to go around and I need a vacuum? Should I just go around everywhere and vacuum? What do you think? We'll have to move your feet right underneath you. There you go, right underneath you. Come on, I got to get underneath you. There, underneath you. Oh, there we go. Oof. Is that how we need to prepare for Jesus? It's not a toy vacuum. I just didn't plug it in. That's not how you prepare for Jesus? What do you think we need to do to prepare for Jesus? Hmm. You can make a bed for Jesus so he can have a place to stay. Yeah, presents for Jesus because it's his birthday coming up. Do you think he needs presents from us? What would you give Jesus in a present? I don't know. That's a hard one, right? He's kind of our present to us, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. What was? A crown. Because he is the king, right? Yeah, he, needs he needs a crown. That's something we could make for Jesus. Um, yes, yes. Okay. How do we make him a crown? Do you think, what kind of crown do you think he needs? Yeah. That's also a hard one to think about, right? Yeah, it's happy birthday. It's my birthday today. You think he liked that kind of crown on Christmas? All you, all you need to do is not put uh, thorns on the crown that's having to be. Not put thorns on the crown for his birthday. That might be a nice, nice, nice birthday present to not have thorns in his crown. You know what? Of all the, all the busyness we have right now, do you know how we actually prepare for Jesus? We don't have to do anything. A wreath crown, yeah, we're thinking about all sorts of things to do, and guess what I want you to think about right now? That we can listen, and that's how we prepare for Jesus, too. What do you think we need to listen to? Do you think it's do more, do better, or his word who says, I love you, and I forgive you, and you're mine? What do you think? Does that sound like easier work than trying to get everything ready and clean everything? <laughs> yeah. So I want you to remember, for Jesus, we don't need to prepare because Jesus prepares us through the word and through the remembering of God's love for us, okay? So you fold your hands with me, and let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for preparing us, for helping us rest and helping us listen to how much you love us and that you, your birthday, is a gift to us and to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
The first reading this morning is from Malachi, the third chapter. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years. The word of the Lord. The second reading today is from Philippians 1. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod the ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Syria, and Trachonitius, and Lysinus, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of the Lord came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it was written in the book of the word of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain shall, and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know about you all, but on, on top of all the preparation that we've been doing in our house for seasonal um, decoration changes. It's also Christmas movie season in the Castillo Olson household. And as I've been watching these movies, quite a few of them, we, um, the, what they teach us about Christmas, and a little bit of a snarky view, I'll be honest, about how they mine for the law and how they focus so much of what we get in our culture and in our movies is what we need to do better in order to reach Christmas morning pure and righteous and good. So you have movies such as Elf. We watched that this weekend in our house. You can get off the naughty list. Did you know that? 
You just need to accept everybody in your family. You need to have your priorities in order. You need to have cheer, and you need to sing along in those random sing-alongs that your community has. Or the movie Christmas Story. Christmas Story is actually chan channeling a little bit of Malachi today. Think of that, that scene when Ralphie has to put the soap in his mouth. Right out of Malachi. How about how the soap of the Lord will purify us? Who would have known that that movie was about a prophet of the Old Testament? Or even It's a Wonderful Life. You need to recognize the gift of your life. You need to recognize the impact your life has on others and in your community. And you better be grateful. I know the nostalgia kind of makes it feel like differently, but when you think of it, you crystallize the message, be grateful for all that you have. I'm not going to um, put aside National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I mean, that is a classic here. And it may seem like family and uninvited house guests are burdens to us. They might set trees on fire, blow up the sewage system in the neighborhood, steal, kidnap our boss even. But if you look deep enough, you will find their good intentions. The spirit of Christmas. Then we throw an elf on the shelf and Santa, and you better be know, know that you are being watched. Every corner of your house, you are being watched. Every place you go, they know what you are doing and you're being measured for your righteousness. If you have not found the spirit of Christmas or its magic, seek it more. Risk more. Refine yourself and your life more. You just have to search deeper into the woods, deeper into the wilderness, deeper into yourself, deeper into the people around you or you're driving you crazy. And then you'll reach Christmas morning and you'll have gifts under the tree. Whew. Malachi is God's messenger, an Old Testament prophet who was one to prepare the way of God. And he talks about the refiner's fire, the fuller's soap, purifying ourselves until you can present offerings to the Lord with righteousness. Our kids today even, couldn't even think of what kind of gift to give to Jesus. What kind of offering do we have to give to Jesus? Well, our texts do tell us that today. But in the meantime, we get stuck on this. We need to keep refining, keep cleaning, keep preparing until it is enough. And guess what? It's never enough. We're never going to get there. And, like, and get like an echo from last week, no one, Malachi says, will stand and no one will reach the goal of their own power and will. What a Christmas message. We are consuming it on the TV. I thought I'd bring it into the sanctuary today. In fact, our gospel does begin today with a list of the entire chain of command for lawful righteousness, both religious and political. From Emperor Tiberius to Pontius Pilate to Herod, who you'd go to to effect change and to make sure we live in a world that is right and pure and righteous. And the high priests, Annas and Caiaphas, are also written there. So you will be judged in the political scheme and also in the religious court. The natural law, the rule of law, the code of law, the Ten Commandments, the Torah are all there to make sure. And they've been there for centuries. All in operation for hundreds of years. And it had not brought freedom or righteousness or acceptable office offerings with all that refinery, with all that work, it wasn't enough. These rulers of the time of Jesus are not who God calls upon to prepare the way of the Lord. It's not about a new law or new Moses or a new appeal to your righteousness and get it right this time. But it came to John in the wilderness, away from the seats of power and law, in a wild place of lawlessness, perhaps, where some preacher's son is giving a different word, a proclamation of forgiveness, a word of gospel coming and doing what it says, forgiving you, loving you. He has a baptism where in which, if you look at the Greek, it's tricky. It says, you will be repented. 
Not that you'll be asked to repent yourself or turn your life around, but you will be turned around by this word through the forgiveness and grace of God. Turned around, reoriented in grace, not accomplished by you, but by God's word that prepares you, that does the work for you. John is a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make path straight. And then we hear, we'll fill the valleys, level the mountains and hills, make straight crooked paths, smooth what is rough. And it sure does sound like we have a lot to do, doesn't it? And when you think about this literally, everything around here is either a hill or a valley. There's nothing straight. Everybody from Minnesota who comes out here is, where's the straight road? We actually took a, video, a picture of like the little stretch on 410 that's straight, and we sent it to my parents. It does exist out here. This is the one area that we don't have to deal with, but then it has other traffic problems, right? And if you want to work on lowering hills and valleys, well, you know, we have to look at Mount Rainier and Baker. And Helen got help in 1980 when that erupted, so it's a little bit lower. So we don't have as much to do with St. Helens, but those other ones, it's going to take some work, everybody, to make those low, low. Or metaphorically, smooth, honest, narrow, leveling our lives, accessibility to all and everyone on this way of God. What does that mean? What does that look like? When we are people of judgment and laws and ordinances and work that have a place in our life but can't accomplish this thing, this coming to us. So as we talk about preparing this Advent, what would you do if you knew that Christ was coming to your house on Christmas? You I mean, you had 400, you know, 2,000 years really to wait for it. If you knew that Christ was coming on, on Saturday, December 25th to your house, what would you do? I just remember the last time I had friends over and I cleaned for like two days because, you know, you get behind on things, don't you? You shove things in closet. I have some friends who put the, um, the chair covers on so they can hide things under chairs. <laughs> just stuff it under the chair and nobody will know. Stuff it in the closet, in the back bedroom, out in a shed, under a bed, wherever you can hide your stuff. Shove those skeletons back in the closet. Because Jesus won't know they're there, right? Jesus knows. So as you are preparing and decluttering and cooking and hosting, do you think that is what Jesus wants from us? That he won't come into that door or he's avoiding you until you're ready? Think of how many people we don't want to visit until we're ready until we, we can receive them with dignity. Jesus is the one guest of all that comes in in the middle of your mess. He already knows what's under the, under the couches and in the closets and hidden away. He knows the, the attempts you've made and how you've failed. And he comes, even if your clothes are on the couch waiting to be folded. Not a case in my life at all or you haven't brought groceries, or the dishes aren't washed, if you're still in your PJ and your face has that line from the pillow on it, Christ comes before you're prepared, without you being prepared. And right before, and right before this text from John, in, in Luke that quotes Isaiah, it gives us the reason why this is the case. Maybe just need to know the context of the Old Testament story from Isaiah chapter 40. It doesn't start right away with the voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare. It starts with comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly and proclaim the, this good news to them. Not demands, but good news. That your hard service has been completed. That your sin has been paid for. That you have received double from the Lord's hand for all your sins. The pathway that Christ takes to you is promised to be completed by God's word freely given. And going through every obstacle, God goes through every obstacle out there to get to you. That's the miracle of Advent. That's the miracle of this prophecy become reality in our lives. Because God comes to you and brings you home. 
It hinges on God's work and proclamation, not yours. It's not our work, our refining, our use of enough soap and application of enough work. It's already been accomplished. Isaiah was told that the grass withers and the flowers fade, and that means that we fade and we grow weary of the refining, of the improving, of the preparing. But God's word endures and comes through the wilderness to you, bringing comfort, gathering you, and saving you. And as Paul said to the Philippians, we have been through a lot, and we have and we can be confident that the work God started will be completed. And in fact, it is, because God has gone through the hills and the valleys, the crooked and the straight paths to find you and to bring you that word of grace and hope. So I'm hoping to ruin all of the Christmas movies for you this year. (laughs) Think about what you're consuming, thinking about the message that it's telling you, and know that in Christ, it's been done for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. You send messengers messengers into the world to proclaim the day of your coming. Make our preachers confident in their preaching, that their words and our lives witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send your spirit to all living creatures that are endangered. Provide them with shelter and care 
and bring us into right relationship with the earth that you create and call good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send leaders to our nations, cities, schools, and businesses to work on behalf of those who have lost parents, spouses, and loved ones, immigrants, the imprisoned, those living in poverty, and all who are oppressed. Make them bold in their commitments to justice and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Send your servants to care for those who suffer. Use our ministries and our lives to reach out with compassion to those who are hungry, oppressed, lonely, and ill. Grant them your healing and wholeness. Hear us, O God. <clears throat> Send prophets to speak difficult truths, even when they are poorly received. Embolden those who ask hard questions and challenge accepted ways. Instill in youth and elders alike a passion for pointing to Jesus in all things. Hear us, O God. At this time, we are, you are welcome to offer your intercessions, either orally or silently. We remember your saints, both those publicly celebrated and those more humbly remembered. Today, we especially lift up and remember Daryl Sherrard and Diane, Vicki Kern's sister, be with them, be with those families as they mourn their losses. Confident that your work will be completed, we live in faith until the day of your coming. Hear us, O oh God. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share that peace with one another. We're offering, just a reminder that the pillar in the back there is where we are still placing our offering if you've brought it to the worship service today. Also, Give Plus app, the uh, um, website. If the website's not working, also, there's, you can directly deposit from your bank accounts as well. There's all these technology things that have changed in the last few years that I'm still learning myself, but there's, there's ways. And we mentioned those just because it's different still as we don't pass the plate, but also that it makes a difference as we are part of our community and our mission and ministry here at Creator is sustained by you all. So God's blessings upon you as we sing our offertory hymn. Mm -hmm. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks, say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the 
Lord has done for us. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what He has done for us. Give thanks. And I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what? The Lord has done for us. Give thanks. of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal, through Christ Jesus, our pathway and our peace. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when you come into our lives fully and completely with your righteousness. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. We are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the communion assistants to please come forward. We will be communing at the two stations in front as you receive bread and then take either wine or grape juice. You're welcome to kneel at the altar area or return to your seats for a time of prayer. These are God's gifts for you, God's people. Come. Eat this bread. Drink this cup, come to 
Come among us at this time, at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all through Christ Jesus, our host and our guest. Amen. Amen. Will you put it on the blessing? And two, three more. There we go. Receive the blessing of our Lord as you go into the world this day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending hymn is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. There are a few hymnals underneath that these Advent hymns are a little rusty. Let us find our rest in thee. 
Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever, thou thy gracious kingdom bring. By thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts alone. By thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. Go in peace.